really don't have anything awesome to share today. So, I thought I would just work on a project and can run the camera while I'm doing that and we'll see what happens. How's that sound? Um, as you can see, my fancy little nameplate is coming right along. I was watching TV the other day and just felt the need to doodle, so I doodled on it some more. It will just be something that would make Picasso jealous when I'm finished, I'm totally sure. But today, <clears throat> I'm going to work on a book idea that I've got. I know, a book, of course, but this one's not really a journal. Um, a couple of videos ago, <clears throat> excuse me, I did a, um, a Happy Mail video that I got from a couple of YouTube friends, from Tracy and Bonnie, and one of the things that Bonnie sent were, uh, was this, let me show you this first, this Sizzix Texture Boutique machine. It's one of those where, you know, you run the, the texture plates through there with some cardstock, and it comes out all textured and fabulous and, you know, way cool. I don't have anything like this. Um, so I'm really excited about this. She also sent a whole bunch of the texture plate things. I don't, I don't know what they're called. A texture envelope? I don't know, but you know what they are. These little things. A whole bunch of these. And so I was trying to come up with a way to wrangle these. Something to stick them in where I could get to them and see them and, um, you know, they wouldn't be just in a bag or envelope or in a drawer. So I thought, well, I'll make a little book for them. So she also sent a whole stack of these. They, When they got here, they were plain manila. You can kind of see on the inside. These are envelopes for microfish. So what I did, I just slapped some paint on them. And this is just a strip of, uh, not washi tape, but, you know, the plastic kind. What do you call that? Deco tape? Is that it? I think that's it. And just to kind of reinforce that top edge. And I'll actually probably put a liner, put a paper liner in here to cover the back and probably even come up over this and then put some kind of little reference piece of cardstock or something along there to show what's in it because I want to put these in them. See these, they fit just right. So I can stick these in there, even the this size. See how well they fit? I just couldn't not use them for that. So I decided that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use those envelopes for all these little texture plate things and I'm going to put them in a book and my idea for the book part is these are covers from an actual book it's one that I picked apart and scavenged for parts and pieces for another project but I saved the covers because it's just good chipboard so these two chipboard pieces found me another chipboard piece to use for the spine so this is going to be I'm on the frame thing I can't tell yeah you can see that okay this will be like this okay like that so the book will close like that. See? And I'm going to use the, this is a hinge, the hidden hinge binding. That's what I'm going to use. So this will go right here. Those flaps will be attached to the covers like that. And then my little envelopes I will glue back to back on each one of the hinges. So there will be two here, two there, two there, two there, you know. So I will have all of my little plates in a little book. And this is the perfect binding to use for this because, <coughs> sorry, it has the quarter inch gusset between each hinge. So that gives you plenty of room for fat stuff. And that way my book 
will hopefully won't be too fat. It will still close at least most of the way. I'm not going to show you how to do this because I'll just screw it up big time, but I will put a link down there in the description area to the video that I watched the other day that gave the best instructions for this that I've seen. And I can't remember the lady's name. Was it Kathy? I think her name was Kathy. Anyway, she did just a fabulous tutorial on this. Explained it so clearly that um, I ended up making one after I watched the video. Like, I didn't even have to watch the video while I was making it. She explained it that well. I was able to retain it and use it later. How cool is that? Okay. Um, so, that's what I'm going to do there. This is the, these are the plates that go through the little machine that you put your texture things in. And I'm not sure if I'm going to include these in the book or not. Here's my dilemma. Not really a dilemma, but I just have to make a decision. If I make the book just like this, like I plan to, with my little envelopes on the hinges, you can see that the edge of the envelope goes all the way up against the spine. Therefore, my cover's too long. I will need to whack my cover off a little bit to make it proportionate. You know, you want the cover of your book to be proportionate to whatever's inside. You want it just a little bit bigger, but not way, way bigger, especially on one end, because that would be funky. So, ideally, I would just whack this off and um, so that it would be the, the right size for the envelopes. But if I leave it this size, I could put some kind of a pocket or a strap or something across the back and slide these in there. It's, they're just about the exact same size, maybe even a little bit bigger than the covers, but not so much bigger that it would be funky, I don't think. And I put an extra um, gusset or whatever in there so that if I wanted to, see this is going to be attached to the cover like that. It's going to close like that. There would be enough room in that gusset for these to sit quite nicely. But I would have to leave the covers the size that they are. I couldn't cut them off. So. That's one of those things where you should really make that decision before you start. But I just can't make that decision right now because I don't know. I need to think about it some more. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and cover these covers. You know, put the, the cover paper on them. Decorate them just like they are. Leave them the length that they are. Assemble the book. And then at the end... I will decide whether or not I want to make a place for those big plates. If I do, you know, I'm good. I've got the space to do it and the cover's the right size. It'll be great. If I decide against it, then my covers are going to be too long for the insides. And what I will do at that point is just cut them off and then put some kind of a decorative um, paper around the end to cut off, I mean, to hide my, my cut edge, which, you know, no one will probably ever know that that's the reason for that decorative piece, except for the few hundred people who watch the video, but y'all won't tell, right? You know, we'll just pretend that that was a design element that I did on purpose. So I think that's what I'm going to do, because I can't really make the decision about those two pieces right now. Um, I really want to see what they look like in the finished book before I commit to it. So here we go. Let's just work on this. And um, I'm just going to do it and just let the video run. I may end up just kind of um, putting it on fast forward on the playback so that you don't have to listen to me ramble. I don't know. We'll see. I chose these papers. These are some that I had painted a while back and I wasn't quite sure how many I was going to need so I picked some that I had several that were similar like these I've got four that are you know similar colors they kind of go together 
and then I chose to contract. You know, this one really doesn't even go. I'm not sure why that one is in there. Let's just toss that. Okay, this one's kind of a contrasting color, which I can use on the spine or on those little cut ends if I end up doing that. So that's the paper that I've chosen. I just made sure that I had probably more than I'm going to need just in case. And let's get this little sucker assembled. I'm going to leave just a little bit of space between the spine and each cover. Just enough, you know, just to leave room for the, oops, for the cover to open and close properly. And the first thing I'm going to do is just duct tape it together. And this is just kind of to reinforce it. So, lay that there. And stick that about halfway across, a little bit less. And then this one, about like that. Test it. Yep. Okay. I do this with most of the uh, books that I bind with a spine like this. I start out with duct tape or, you know, a scrap of canvas or just something right there to give it some added strength. Something other than just the paper you're going to cover it with. Another piece of duct tape. And my other cover. Just make sure it's the same on both sides, as close as you can get it. Good enough. Okay. Yep. It's going to be good. And I'm going to go ahead and um, put some more duct tape on the inside on both sides of the spine too. ready for paper. Now, my covers are long, my paper is short. Normally, you know, I would really like just one piece to go over the whole thing, but that's not going to happen. So I'm going to put my contrasting piece away. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start about in the middle of the spine. See, that'll give me plenty of room to overlap. I'm going to use two sheets. Do the same thing over here. Do it like that. And then I'll go in with my contrasting piece and I'll make a strip to go around the middle to kind of hide that seam and to add some contrast. So, Sounds good? Yeah, I thought so. Now, let me pick two sheets. Um, I like, I think, these two. I don't know why. I just do. And I want them like Okay, now next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use my Yes Paste to glue the covers on. Oh, maybe. Ugh. There we go. But I want to thin it out some. So I 
got my um, little uh, trash credit card thing. And I'm just going to scoop out some paste. I'm using aluminum foil here because it's what I had handy. No other reason. It was just there, so that's what I'm using. And if I have the little jars of paste, I usually just add some water and mix it up, you know, just a little bit off the top. But this is too deep to do that. I get glue all over my hands. So I'm just going to pull some out. I'm just going to add some water. Not a whole lot. Just thin it out so it's easy to spread. I think I've said it before, this is one of my very favorite glues, especially for book covers. It just, um, it's easy to use. It's just practically perfect in every way. Name the movie. Okay. Now, I am going to put the glue on my book. paper into the fold when you bend your cover up. Work it down in there because you want it smooth when it's open and smooth when it's closed. Okay, I think I'm going to go wash my hands and let this dry. And then we'll come back and continue. Sound like a plan? Okay, I'll be back. 